Greetings and welcome to part 3 of the Linear Law series and for this episode, we are going to look at how to cheat in Linear Law. So what does the success criteria for cheating look like? Well, it's just to be able to use a calculator to find the gradient and the y-intercept of a Linear Law graph without actually drawing the graph. Let's begin with a recap. We have learned in the first episode how to find the gradient and the big Y intercept of a given linear law graph and transform it into a non-linear equation by substituting the found gradient and big Y intercept together with the functions for the big Y and the big X into the equation big Y equals to M big X plus C. In the second episode, we learned how to construct a linear law graph from a given set of experimental data. First, by converting the model into the form big Y equals to M big X plus C. Second, we extend the given table to include the big X and the big Y. Then we plotted the values and constructed the best fit line. Finally, with the gradient and the big Y intercept, we are able to solve for unknown constants in the given model. In today's lesson, we will learn how to use the calculator to perform a shortcut to find the gradient and the big Y intercept without actually drawing the graph. This is definitely not meant to be formal working, but it's a good way to check the accuracy of your answers for your linear law questions. This trick is made possible by simple linear regression function found in your calculator. But what is linear regression? Now suppose we have a set of data with two variables x and y, and we have some reason to believe that they are related in a linear fashion. We can use the simple linear regression formula to calculate the line of best fit that passes through this set of data. The equation of this line is y equals to alpha plus beta x, where alpha is the y-intercept and beta is the gradient. The regression formula gives us a mathematically sound way to calculate the gradient. And from the gradient, we are also able to calculate the y-intercept. Now, with that out of the way, let's look at how to use the calculator to find the y-intercept alpha and gradient beta. Let's take the 2020 O-Level Paper 2 Question 6 as our sample problem. The table below shows the population P in millions of a country on January the 1st at intervals of 5 years from 1995 to 2015. The variable x is measured in units of 5 years. This question asks us to first plot ln p against x, then find the gradient of the straight line and hence express p in the form of a e to the power of kx, where a and k are constants to be found. The first step would be to try to express the model in the form of big Y equals to m big x plus c. Since we know that p is equal to a times e to the power of kx, we can take ln on both sides. Then we can split the right-hand side using the product law. We will get ln a plus ln e to the power of kx. We can bring the power kx down as the coefficient using the power law. This tells us that big y is equal to ln p, and big X is equals to X, which is exactly what we are told to draw. And our gradient is going to be K, and our big Y intercept is going to be ln A. Next, we go back to the table, and we're going to add in another row for ln P. So after we've extended the table, bear in mind that the row with X, this will form our big X, and the row of all the values for ln P will form our big Y. So now that we have the x and y variables, we can begin the linear regression. So I'm going to do the demonstration with two models of calculators. I have the fx96sg plus on the left and the fx97sgx on the right. These are two commonly found uh, SEAB approved calculators, at least in my school. But I believe that any O-level approved calculators should be able to do this as well. So the first thing we want to do is to get into the statistics mode. So for the 96SG, you're going to select mode first, and you're going to choose statistics stat, which is number two. For the newer 97SGX, you're going to select menu, 
and you're going to see a list of icons, you're going to select the histogram icon, which is number three. Now, this is going to open up a scary list of options in your calculator, but it's not very scary. If you've done standard deviation in Emacs, you would have come across this screen before and you'll be choosing the one variable option of, or one bar for the 96SG. But for linear regression, you want to find the linear regression option, and that would be number two. It would be A plus BX for the 96SG. It will be y equals to a plus bx for the 97sg. So select option number 2. Now the calculator will give you a data table to fill up for two columns of x and y respectively. So let's pull out the data that we have. We have the big x equals to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's going to go into our first column. And we have ln p equals to 1.20, 1.32, and so on. That's going to go into our second column. So now take some time to populate the x and y column. Now, in case you accidentally press all clear AC and the data table disappears, you can get back to this data table for the 96SG. You just click on Shift 1, 2 to get back to the table. For the 97 SGX, in case you want to go back to the table and make amendments, you click option 4. So now that you've keyed everything in, you can check that your display is similar to mine. Let's check the fifth row. The X column is 4 and the Y column is 1.69. You can also use the arrow buttons to scroll up and down to check that all the rows and columns are correctly filled in. Last but not least, all that remains is to retrieve the values of the y-intercept A and the gradient B. So let's begin with the 96SG+. plus. You first have to press all clear, but don't worry, your data hasn't really disappeared. Then you've got to click on Shift 1, followed by choosing the regression option, which is number 5. For the 96SG, it's much easier. All you need to click on is Option, followed by Regression Calc, which is option number 4. So for the FX96SG+, Plus, you're going to be given a few options, A, B, R. So if you choose option 1, which is A, you'll get the Y-intercept, which is 1.198. And you select option 2, which is the B and you press equal, this will give you a gradient of 0 0.123. Whereas if you're using the FX97SGX, the display is way better. Firstly, all the display is available on a single screen. You're also reminded that the equation is y equals to a plus bx in case some people forget which one is the y-intercept and which one is the gradient. This reminds you immediately. You also see that this is our value that's written there our value, basically you're expecting a number very close to 1, so 0 0.99 something. It just tells you that all the points fit nicely on a straight line. If you were to draw the graph, you'll be expecting an upward sloping graph with a gradient of 0 0.123 and a y-intercept of 1.198. So we can write down the equation, big Y is equal to 0 0.123 big X plus 1.198. So for completeness sake, let's solve the entirety of this question. So we know that ln A is equals to C, so we can replace the y-intercept C with 1.198. Next, we convert this logarithm equation back into an indice equation. This tells us that A is equals to E to the power of 1.198. And using a calculator, we'll get 3.31 rounded to 3SF. Next, we know that K is equals to the gradient M. So that's 0 0.123, and it looks like we're done. But we are not done. The question doesn't want us to just find the values of A and K. It wants the equation for P. So we need to sub the A and K back into the equation for P. So P is equal to A times e to the power of Kx. So P is equal to 3.31 times e to the power of 0 0.123x. And that's when we are finally done. So let's now return back to the success criteria that we've set out at the start of the lesson and reflect. 
Are you now able to use a calculator to find the gradient and y-intercept of a linear law graph? So if there's any part of the lesson that's unclear to you, do leave a comment in the comment section down below. We have come to the end of the three-part series on linear law. The next series of videos will be on trigonometry. You can also go to the website, which I will also link in the info section below. This is a link to the free interactive math textbook that I'm writing that these series of videos are also a part of. You can go to this website to self-study other math topics. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. Do leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more O-Level and Olympiad math. Do have a great day of learning.